first of all, thanks so much for having me. Uh, thanks so much for um, spending some time this morning with me to the community folks group, to, uh, to Paris and Priya and everyone involved with the group for inviting me to, uh, to participate in uh, this session. Um, quick introduction. Uh, so again, my name is Patrick O'Keefe. Uh, I've been managing communities for, this is actually my 20th year. I started in 1998 uh, in, in moderation. And um, over the last 20 years, I've done a number of different things. Um, uh, currently, I'm the director of community for the community company, where I lead our digital um, engagement efforts around our uh, group of communities and membership organizations. Uh, currently, most notably, Forbes Councils and um, YEC, the Young Entrepreneur Council. Um, I've managed communities independently for a long time. I manage KarateForums.com, which is a 17-year-plus-old uh, martial arts community. Um, I wrote the book Managing Online Forums, which was published back in 2008 about uh, kind of the people aspects of community more so than tech. Um, I, I hosted a, a community podcast 10 years ago called The Community Men Show. I think it's probably 12 years ago now. Um, I currently host the Community Signal podcast at communitysignal.com. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, at this point, I've spent more than half of my life, well over half of my life uh, in community work. So it really is uh, what I love to do and sort of my passion and, and my profession. So um, I enjoy talking about it. So I'm, I'm thankful to have the opportunity to chat with you um, today. So I have some questions that were submitted beforehand. Um, and as we go through, you know, feel free to uh, ask a follow up or if there's anything that I say that, that picks your interest, I'm happy to chat. Um, happy to go into detail and kind of focus on any particular um, details that uh, that that you know you might be interested in. So yeah, just let me do one thing. I just want to get my screen set up in a way that makes sense. I'm so used to multiple monitors that I'm I'm a little uh, spoiled sometimes. Um, all right, let's get this set up here. Do, do, do. All right, that should do it. Very cool. Okay. Um, So yeah, if I miss anything, uh, Paris, feel free to uh, send me a Facebook Messenger uh, message as well. But I think I've got it under control. So uh, let me go ahead and pull from the initial list that we had here. Um, the first question that we have is from Utkarsh. Um, how do you uh, manage a lot of communities? Uh, is there a process that you follow? So I mean, at one point, most of my career, I was kind of solo. And at one point, I was managing, I don't know, eight forums and a, and a few blogs and sort of uh, by myself. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. And so I was managing them at the highest level by myself. But I had a great team of moderators, volunteer moderators who um, helped me. You know, I pride myself on picking great moderators, on ensuring that they are sort of the best from the community and they set the right example. Um, I'd always rather have no moderators than have a bad moderator. Um, you know, I've volunteer moderators and people that you entrust with some level of responsibility on the community should never be chosen by sort of the number of contributions or even their activity level, but sort of the quality of the activity. So I've been fortunate to have a lot of great um, moderators over the years, still have amazing moderators. My team at KarateForms.com is incredible. But um, I think for me, like you said, process, I think routine things are very important. So just the idea that we go to work today, we have these things we check off, we make sure these things are taken care of, and then we have time to look at other things. So um, I think that process varies by, um, by community, by the, the, the audience that you serve, but I, and by person managing the community. Like we all have a different way of doing things. Um, everything from the time of the day that you do it to, uh, to the order that you do it in. Um, I mean, a simple example is like for creditforms.com, I have this process I follow. Every time I visit the community, I check my private messages. I check post reports of any violation reports. I check the staff forums. I check a few particular forums that I want to be active in myself. And then I do a search of recent posts. And that's super simple, but like that helps me keep things compartmentalized and make sure that I'm not missing anything to go from my messages to the staff messages to the public messages and make sure that those things are all taken care of with an emphasis, especially on a community as mature as creditforms.com, 17 years in uh, an emphasis on taking care of the things that maybe members don't see far more than the things that they do. Um, you know, at my day job, you know, we have a lot of different processes. We have processes for onboarding people. We have uh, how they are vetted for our Facebook groups, the emails they receive after we add them, how they're tagged in our CRM. Um, so I've written policies. When I came in, we didn't have policies. So I, I've written these playbooks that speak to all of these processes. And I, I lead a small team. And you know to execute execute upon those processes every single day. So I think um, 
everything that you do that's repetitive, everything that you do more than once, everything that you do on a regular basis, daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, um, write out those processes and follow them. Um, for you, uh, if you're solo, uh, I think it's valuable to be able to show other people at your organization what you're doing on a daily basis. Um, and you know, I'll be honest, like I wrote a book and I refer to that book once in a while. Like I put my thoughts down on paper because you know, you can't remember everything that's going on at once. And I, that's kind of ridiculous to think about that, you know, I write things and then I look back at them, but that's sort of, that's, you know, if you think of like uh, in, a, in a more personal sense, like journaling, um, you know, why are we writing things? Why are we documenting things? Why are we taking a log of our life or, or why are we so interested in what we've done? And the same is true for your work life. So those processes, everything that you do that's repetitive, write it down, share it internally with your team. Um, and, uh, and I think that'll, that'll help you to get it to kind of navigate the big task that can be multiple communities and where you feel very spread, um, just having a process and, and writing it down and following it can help you define, at least helps me to find some kind of peace in, in that process and make sure that things are, um, are getting done. Cool, and I, I see there's a good question here from Asia. I'll circle back. Um, and, and Pars, I don't know if you, if you have the ability to kind of take a log of, of any kind of thing that comes in that maybe I, will, I might miss and then send it to me. Um, I'm just sort of scrolling through the Facebook. When we get to my complaints, someone asked about my complaints. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about Facebook. I'm trying to look at the chat and it's just this tiny, tiny window here that I have to scroll through. Um, all right. Next question um, comes from uh, Saranj. Um, how do you manage, oh no, no, sorry, no, read that one. What's uh, from Saranj, what's one engagement hack that people should use more but are not doing um, so currently? You know, I think a simple thing to think about is this, I, I just mentioned the stuff that people never see. So one thing that we do um, in the communities I manage for the community company is um, we don't wait for people to, to, to post um, and to join in. We, uh, if necessary, hold their hand and walk with them to the post box. Uh, so like one thing that, a simple thing that, you know, is pretty common in, in most communities is the idea of the introduction, whether that's an introduction thread, a single thread posted every certain uh, period of time, which is I think works really well for Facebook groups because of how poorly they are designed, <laughs> you know, how it's one screen and everything is on it. So having that one thread every one week, two week, however long is good. Uh, in more traditional structured forms, you have the introduction section, but you know, the introduction is very easy to get people to do. So how do you turn the introduction into more for your community and for your company? So what we do is um, we always log that information. We have the introduction and we log it in a separate spreadsheet so that we can search for keywords at any time. So for example, someone might say, I'm a real estate agent in Boston. I focus on selling apartments. So if we have someone who comes in the community and is looking for someone from Boston, when we keyword search that spreadsheet, Boston will come up. If we keyword search apartments, we want someone who's looking, who sells, sells apartments, that person will come up. So that allows us to tie them into relevant conversations. Yes, you could tag them in the Facebook post or you know, a better thing to kind of aspire to is to privately ping them and say, hey, we have this conversation, your expertise fits perfectly. Connect them to the meaningful conversation because once they make that first post on a meaningful conversation where they can actually share real knowledge they have and the community reacts, whether that's through micro actions or through replies, I mean, half of your battle is already won. If, if you get them in the community sharing knowledge and, and that, that feel good, that feeling that comes from uh, people reacting in a positive way, to your post, um, that's that's half the battle. Uh, another thing we do with the introduction is, is let's, some people go in depth. We want detailed introductions as much as possible because if someone mentions something in the introduction that we think could be a topic in the in the community, we reach out to them and proactively say, hey, you know, I know that you are an expert in, let's say, blockchain. Everyone's a blockchain expert these days. But let's say, you know, <laughs> let's say you're an expert in blockchain uh, and how it applies to pharmaceutical companies. Okay, that would be a great conversation for our community. Would you like to start that conversation? Better yet, we will help you write it. We will draft that post for you and work with you to write something that you can then submit. And again, half the battle is won. If you get them to make that first post, half the battle is won because they will receive reactions to that most likely and it will give them that feeling that brings them back to the community over and over again. Um, so that's sort of my one hack is just to Think about, and maybe it's not one, but think about the things you can do behind the scenes privately to connect people to relevant conversations. The things that, you know, the community doesn't know about. Much of the magic, if you want to call it that, of community is what people never see. It's the behind the scenes things. It's the things that you do one-to-one -one with members that then manifest in the community in bigger ways. Um, next question, actually a, a few questions. I'm going to group all into one from Priya. Thanks, Priya. Um, and thanks, everyone. Thanks, Udkars. Thanks, Saranj. Uh, for the questions so far. 
Um, so uh, I'll tackle these sort of one by one. I want to pause real quick and see if I can get a handle on uh, on an easier way to look at the comments. Oh, here we go. That's that's a lot better. Sweet. Okay, I have a better handle in the comments now. No problem. Um, I have one monitor and I have uh, a video over here. Actually, you know, I probably don't even need that video up as much. Um, that makes more sense to me. Okay, I'm gonna move that over here. Cool. Nice. Okay, Priya. So, what is what's your favorite win in the last year for your community? Please do share the story. So, I think that um, one of um, the things that I like that we've done in the last year, um, and it's not my accomplishment, it's the company's accomplishment, uh, my team's accomplishment, is in the last, um, I think it's 10 months, yeah, 10 months, uh, we've grown Forbes Council's active members by 515%. Um, and it was already, and I know that number because I just looked at it the other day. Um, and, uh, you know, active members tends to be our core community health metric. Um, not the business metric, but the community health metric. Uh, and so, uh, you know, when I, I came into a program that was somewhat mature, um, and uh, but maybe lacked direction. And so, you know, in just a short period of time, we've been able to grow it in a very uh, ex exponential way where we have more eyeballs on the community for all sorts of good reasons. So we can provide more value to them. Um, so we can, uh, you know, engage with them in a better way for our products. Um, so they can connect with each other in a more meaningful way. So um, I think that's sort of the big thing that I'm really happy with right now. I think we've, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's representative of the work that we've done. Uh, from Priya, what do you find yourself complaining about the week uh, to week being a community person? Facebook. I find myself complaining about Facebook all the time. Um, and our communities are on Facebook right now, Facebook groups. You know, if you listen to the podcast, if you, if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen me say some things about Facebook. I'm not afraid to be honest there. Facebook uh, for communities, for, um, you know, as a hosted platform, as something that people um, uh, use to build community on, poorly designed, terrible platform, not well done. Um, they know this, it's intentional, they wanna keep you locked in. Um, there's so many things that could go down. We talked about the home screen. Um, it is one thing, poor organization, their idea of tags to organize things, bad, won't work, requires people to use tags, Spoiler alert, people don't use tags. Like unless it's automatically tagged, for the most part, most communities don't bother to put descriptive tags. And those that do put tags in probably aren't the tags you want. So unfortunately, uh, that doesn't work well for organization. Moderation tools, exceptionally poor. Facebook groups are where moderation tools were in 2000 in online forums. I had better tools on PHPBB in 2000 than Facebook groups has in 2018. And when you think about it, this is like the eighth most valuable company in the world. There's no excuse. Just poorly done. Like that's they're they're doing what they want with it, and it's a poor platform and to keep us locked in. Of course, there's the data that they keep. Um, you know, I come from a world where your community can go through different platform changes. You can upgrade to a different software application. You might use PHPBB. You might use Ultimate Bulletin Board 20 years ago, and then you upgrade it to PHPBB, then V Bulletin, then Discourse or Zenforo. And so, like the idea is that you can do the best thing for the community. When you decide to move on from Facebook. All that stuff dies with you. All that, all those posts stay in the group, and that's sad. Like I feel like we are going to have an era of online communities that is essentially a black hole because of our involvement in Facebook. So, like you can see old communities that existed 20 years ago and still read them online, but I feel like this period of time, these last six, seven, eight years, is almost going to be a black hole for a lot of community building efforts because they're going to die within this walled garden. So, I mean, I could list off a lot of things, but um, you know, there's a there's enough. Uh, probably on you uh, for Facebook. So Facebook is definitely the thing that I um, probably complain about more often than not. It's not, I know I like Facebook as a social tool for me personally, nothing against Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg in particular or anything but like that. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a great community building platform. Next question from Priya, what, uh, which is your favorite community uh, where you just found it and figured, yes, this is exactly what I need right now or which community has given you the strongest connect over the years? I mean, so I'm gonna throw my communities aside because I think that's kind of a cop-out answer. Um, one community that's had a major impact in my life is the SidePoint forums. Um, it's, it's one of the larger web development communities in the world. And um, you know, I have met, I have a small circle of friends that I consider to be like close friends. I know their families, um, we go to each other's houses, we make an effort to spend time in person together. Um, probably half of that group I met in the SidePoint forums. Um, like participating in that community for the, I think it's eight plus years that I spent 
uh, as a as a as a mentor and advisor, as a podcast host um, for them, um, has given me, uh, like I said, half of my closest friends, numerous professional opportunities, um, and so you know, the Cyclone Forums is a really kind of special place uh, for me, and has given me so many connections and and, and people that I uh, that I really think highly of. So. Uh, I'm always grateful that they put together uh, that community and always grateful to the people who started it and managed it, uh, especially for the time I was there. Um, so a, a couple of which you might be familiar with. Oh, Sarah Hawk, um, you might know. She actually took it over, I think, after I left staff, but maybe when I was there during at the end. But yeah, there was a lot of really great people over there. Uh, last thing from Priya, P. P Diddy is your life coach. You must tell us more about that. So, I mean, in my bio, I have Puff Daddy as my life coach. If you know me, you know that I love Bad Boy Records and I love Puff Daddy. And... Um, you know, uh, I think that that statement is kind of sort of said in jest, but also very serious because like the music that he has created has really sort of been honestly the soundtrack to my life. And I listen to music all the time while I work. So, I mean, the things that I, that the things that that music pushes me to do, uh, it's, it's very powerful. And so like, I've learned a lot from him, how he approaches his business, how he does his work. Um, and you know, it honestly, like he's been really kind of, uh, inspirational to me in a lot of ways. So like if I'm talking about the people that um, have really inspired me, um, I think when you look at like that celebrities, he's definitely uh, at the very tip top of that list. And uh, like I said, I love, I love Puff Daddy. So uh, <laughs> that explains that. Um, I'm gonna pause real quick here. Um, thanks Paris for the uh, questions coming in here. Make sure I don't miss anything. Um, I'm going to pause here. To look. I have more questions from the earlier submissions, but I'll pause here to just make sure we don't miss anything uh, from the chat real quick. Um, Aisha, uh, 20 years, Pat Kroki, please share some tips on how to avoid burnout because as you know, engagement is a very consuming area. How do you switch off if you do? Um, uh, I, I mean, self-care and burnout are such constant topics in our industry. Um, I, I think that uh, one of the key things is just to recognize that a community that needs you to exist is a poorly developed community. Um, my communities do not need me. Uh, they will survive without me. Um, that's the work that I've done. Um, and so that's, I think that's what we all need to get to is an understanding, a mental understanding, a belief. And, and the work that we do is to prepare our communities to be great when we are not around. And so I, I think it's vital to keep schedules, to let things go for a little while, to step away, to have your time off, to take vacations. Um, if the community ends up in flames when you're gone, think about what you're doing and what you can do to change that or the support you're receiving from above or whatever. Something needs to change because like community is not a 24 seven job. I don't believe that. I push back against that as a, as a thought. Um, you know, uh, I think that we need to condition our members to understand that spam is not the end of the world. Like it's not an emergency. Um, the only emergency I have is someone th saying they're going to harm themselves, suicide threats, um, depression, those are emergencies. Everything else can wait. Some members said the F word, some members being nasty, someone doesn't like your design, whatever it is, like all that stuff can wait. So we need to redefine what we think of as an emergency and as a priority and understand that, you know, if we are a small staff team, if we're one person, two people, three people, um, you know, this isn't 24 seven global coverage. Like we have lives, we have things we have to get done in our lives. And uh, I'm not gonna get to the end of my life and wish that I had made one more forum post. Um, although I love forums and love community, um, all the same. So just, just, just think about those two things. Number one, the community needs to exist without you. And number two, think about emergencies and redefine what that means. Um, uh, Pradyumna, Pradyuma, uh, sorry again for any mispronounce, mispronounced names here. Um, I like no moderator is better than a bad one. Can you give an example? Sure. I mean, there are cases I think when moderation becomes a popularity contest, um, you know, I have actually banned the number one poster in my community. The person who had the most posts, I banned them. And I did it because it was necessary. Like, I don't ban people. People ban themselves, right? I just apply the policies and give people an opportunity to participate in a, in a good way for the community. So, like, I don't view... Uh, post count or, or like, it's not an election. Like the person who the members think would be a great moderator is often not a great moderator because they don't understand that moderation is 90% stuff they never see. So um, I think making moderator uh, uh, roles about popularity or number of posts is a bad idea. And I think you need to focus on what people do, how they speak to other members, how, you know, how thoughtful they are, um, their aptitude for the technology. Um, those are important things. Um, being the number one poster, being well-liked, being popular, not so much. 
Um, Harshit, how, what are some of your, thanks for the question, what are some of your favorite communities? Well, I talked about SciPoint. Um, SciPoint's awesome, um, you know, an important part of, of, of my life, certainly. Um, you know, beyond that, um, trying to think, I participated in so many random online communities over the years. Um, and it's, it's interesting to think about sort of those relationships. But SciPoint was one that I really stuck with the longest of all. You know, in my own communities, I think KarateForms.com is special just because KarateForms.com is an example of what, what happens when you put in like a decade's worth of work. Um, you know, I know we won't all be in our jobs or be able to manage the same community for so long. But if you ever have the opportunity to manage a community for 17 years, um, do it because uh, the reality is that when you found a community and when you spend that amount of time on it, you, you develop a certain credibility in the community. Um, and, and it really helps you get things done and move things forward if you have the interest of the community at heart and you're trying to do good things. Um, so creditforms.com is just awesome to me because of how people speak to one another. I mean, we can have people come in with the most delicate topics and they receive thoughtful responses where on other communities they would receive things that were, I don't know, misogynistic or sexist or, um, or, 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 you know, maybe even like racist or whatever, intolerant in some way. But our community is very thoughtful and it starts with having good guidelines 20 years ago or 17 years ago and moderating against them for a long period of time. So um, I, I, my own community is kind of a cop out, but I love CardiForms.com. Um, Shandan, uh, what, thanks for the question. What advice would you give 20 years younger yourself? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know. It's, I think one of the things that community builders struggle with early on is the need, the feeling to satisfy everyone and to help everyone. The best communities focus on a specific audience and knock it out of the park with that audience. They understand who they exist to serve and they pursue that audience vigorously. So I think that's one of the things that new community builders often struggle with is the fact that you will do things that will make people unhappy. That's the very nature of building a strong community is understanding um, who you serve. Now that isn't to mean, uh, that isn't to be taken as saying uh, you're arrogant or that you are a snob, but like, you know, uh, easy example with uh, creditforms.com, like if you are not going to discuss things productively, um, if you are not going to give people the space to uh, talk about martial arts that maybe you think are frivolous or silly or, or not um, applicable in uh, realistic fight situations, then you need to move on to somewhere else because we will allow those conversations here. So uh, just by the very nature of what you allow, your guidelines, the sort of vision of your community, you identify an audience. And so um, where people get in trouble is they say, okay, so we're missing out on these people, so we need to be more like this for those people, but they lose the people they already had. And so change is good, change is important, but just understand that you exist to serve someone. And if you find yourself in a position where you're chasing everyone, then you, you don't serve anyone at all. Your community is not for anyone. So be wary of that. Um, <clears throat> Jonathan uh, Pereira, um, <clears throat> what, are, what are the better alternatives to um, Facebook for online communities. I mean, I think hosted platforms are better in general. Um, you know, if you're looking at sort of the lower end cost wise discourse and Zenforo, I think are both very good for different reasons. Um, Zenforo has such a mature ecosystem, um, a lot of good things built in. Uh, discourse is certainly uh, very good as well, has a lot of good things going for it. Has Sarah Hawk, who I mentioned earlier, uh, working on the product side. She's very smart, excellent person. Um, so, I mean, a, a low cost side, that's where I push you now. Um, you know, we have plenty of hosted platforms. I mean, the reality is that owning your data and being able to customize the software is pretty much always going to be better for you. Like the Facebook thing is really a short term thing. It's short term gain, long term loss. Like you are at the whim of Facebook. And so when they decide to cut the reach of groups, like they're, they're saying they're playing a nice tune right now that they want to focus on groups. But when businesses focus on groups, like they focused on pages, that reach will be cut and you will have to pay for it. Like, don't be shocked that, that when that happens, you can't be surprised when Facebook punches you in the face over and over again. You can't be surprised on the seventh punch. Like they've done it before. They will do it again. Protect yourself. Um, so I, I think those are two good low end hosted platforms. I mean, on the high end, there's a number of different platforms you can look at. Um, on the enterprise level, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, hosted platforms are definitely the way to go. Control your data, control your future. Um, I think it's it's insurance on your existence. That's not to say you ignore Facebook totally, but you just use it in ways that benefit your company and drives people back to that hosted community. Um, <clears throat> uh, 
Shah, Shah, R R Y R, Shah. I'm gonna say Shah. I'm sorry again. Um, how can you help people from diverse backgrounds and with different expectations in a co-working space get on the same page and contribute better? I think in-person community is interesting. Um, yeah, I, I think that not to give too basic an answer, but I, I just think it all starts with uh, just respect and openness for people's differences and allowing that to exist. I think. Um, I had someone in the, in the community in KarateFarms.com yesterday who simply was creating a space where other people could not exist, where they would not have a place. And so I had to shut that down. Like, um, there's an image floating around of saying like, the tolerance doesn't mean being tolerant to everyone. You have to be intolerant of people who are intolerant. Otherwise, um, you know, we end up with um, bad things happening is basically the summation of it. So I think you have to have an eye on more freedom, on tolerance, on allowing people to have their own spaces and exist safely in the space. Um, I haven't done a lot of work with co-working spaces, so I'll just pass that off to people who are more expert uh, level on that uh, and know where my limitations are. Um, uh, Siddhartha, um, how do you scale the community? Uh, more than 50 uh, people number after taking it to a decent number of members. Um, 20 side, you go from 20 to more than 50. Any ideas to take the community to third level connections? Um, <clears throat> it's a good question. I mean, I tend to think communities grow one by one. And so, you know, the work that you're doing at 20 people is not so much different than the work that you're doing at 50 or more than 50 or 100 people even. Um, you're still cycling people in, onboarding them through good onboarding processes, helping them make that first post, helping them introduce themselves. Um, uh, welcoming them to the community, helping them make that first post based on their explanation or based on their uh, expertise, I should say. So, I mean, I don't think that works all that much different, to be honest with you. Um, I think you keep growing. Like, you don't have to worry so much about adjusting those processes at 50 people, 100 people, 200 people. Now, that's that's unless your community is like a private premium community where people are paying you a lot of money. Then you might find more ways to connect them, um, might leverage in-person events, um, but yeah, I don't think the I don't think the work is all that different. Um, <clears throat> Priya, yeah, it's SidePoint.com. Uh, SidePoint, that's that's the SidePoint forums. Um, now they, they do run discourse, and it's uh, I think they still call it the forums. Arco, um, Arco, Arco Duty. I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, is there any way to track an existing uh, grown community which has scaled very much with members almost above 20k? Um, any suggestions? Track an existing growth community. Um, I'll ask follow up on that. What does that mean track? Um, like, what are you trying to track? And I'll, I'll circle back to that. So let me go back to the questions that I had pre show or a pre live stream. Um, uh, Mahesh asked, uh, while growing community, where should one focus? Uh, do you focus on growing slow, keeping a low focus on increasing members, but converting more uh, and more into loyal members? from that small chunk or growing fast, go all out on adding new members and convert as many as one can from the big lot. In my opinion, each approach has its own pros and cons. Uh, with first, you were all zoomed in and keep better personal connection, but then you grow slow. And in the other one, you increase the count, but it gets difficult to stay connected. What do you think? Um, thanks for the thoughtful question, Mahesh. Um, I, I think either is okay. Um, I lean towards slow because I think slow is sustainable. I think when we do things like dump 200 people on a community, um, yes, there's a little blip in the active members chart that goes off, but um, I think that uh, it becomes something that you're measured against in a weird way. It's like, it's like if you have a contest or a giveaway in a community and people join, most of the people who join for that contest join only for that giveaway. And so you have this blip. Um, is that a realistic thing? Is it actual growth in the community? No, not really. Um, so I, I do think it's better to focus on what you have um, as much as you kind of focus on what you don't have. Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, I mean, I think people get caught up with, I only have these members, I want these members. Um, the most important thing you have right now is your current members. So um, I definitely lean on sort of the growing slower side, but the funny thing about trying to grow slow is that sometimes when you do that, you actually grow fast. Um, so I, I just think that you, you, know, you take that approach and you, uh, and you go uh, and you go with it, um, and and you know if it, if it happens and it moves faster, then it moves faster. Like um, you know, you can say I'm going to grow slow, but communities um, are sort of like you know, it's just like nature. Like they will grow faster on their own sometimes. Um, last of the pre-show uh, questions, Tija, um, how do uh, thanks for the question. How do you reignite or how how to reignite and engage a conversation in a dormant community if you have ever faced such a situation? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I faced uh, that situation at uh, at my day job just recently. Um, I think that uh, you know, in a way, it can be useful to approach it as a new launch. So um, think about it like a new community, and where would you start uh, if you were if you were starting fresh from a new community? So in our case, um, you know, what I wanted to do was I, I kicked everyone out of the Facebook group we had, um, and the reason I did that is because excuse me, the group had had low quality contributions. And the only benefit of being on Facebook, the only benefit that exists to being on Facebook uh, for us is that you can get in their, their, um, their homepage feed and you can get in their notifications on Facebook. That's it. If you lose those two things, there's no benefit to being here, realistically. Um, and, and the reality is that um, I had this saying that I came up with two clicks in five seconds, and it's an estimate, but it takes two clicks in five seconds for people to turn that stuff off totally, to opt out of the notifications, to take you out of their home feed. Um, and so once they do that, like they'll be a member in your group, but you'll never hear from them. And so they, they're not really a member. They're just a number on the screen. Um, so we wanted to reset that clock and start over um, with an emphasis on higher quality conversation. Uh, and then we kind of did it the old school way of just saying, okay, we're rebooting this community. We know it's been inactive. We know it hasn't been as strong as we would like it to be, but we're gonna we're gonna fix that. And we'd like to help. We'd like uh, we're looking for a small group of members to help us get it started on the right foot to help us set the tone. And so then I curate that early group of members, and we get things going slowly, and we get that ball rolling. And then we let more members in, and then we let all the members in. And so I would think about how you can make it new and fresh, acknowledging it wasn't active, acknowledging what you're working on now, getting people excited for that, and, and treat it like a new launch, even though it's, it's not. One second, just going to uh, messages, Paris is sending me, thanks Paris. Um, yes, so, um, Curry asked, uh, how should we handle the dead members of our community? Do you think we should ask them to leave if they are not getting anything out of this? Um, at first, I thought your question was going to be about people who had passed away. Um, <laughs> that doesn't seem like the right way to handle those people. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't like pruning members. I feel like a member that's inactive now can always come back. I mean, and this might be a long view, but like with creditforms.com, which I managed 17 years, like we have had many members disappear for five years and then come back. We've had members who were, um, who were mad that I removed their posts. And so they said, I'm never coming back. I'm gone. And three years later, they pop back up because they missed what the forum represented. Like they, they went elsewhere. They looked around the internet and they said, you know what? What they have over there is worth my time. So, um, you know, I think that I see no value in pruning members um, of course, if you have a paid program, obviously you have an active subscribers, they go away, whatever. But I see no point to pruning members. I feel like you're, well, why? There's no, op I mean, there was once a time where people would say, oh, it's my database. It's filling up my database. We are long past that being a consideration. Um, so yeah, I would say to keep them. Um, let's see. So we got a question here um, from uh, Naman. Uh, how do you measure a community uh, community health? How do you measure community health? Um, what are the parameters over which you would ju um, judge the community health and any recommendations on tools to measure the same? Um, I think the kind of baseline community health metric is active members. Um, it's a it's a number that's fairly easy to explain, um, and it's a number that has meaning, right? We can all we can we can inflate numbers, or we can you know you can do things to inflate certain numbers, but uh, active members tends to be a meaningful thing. So, I mean, just as a baseline, I would look at that. Um, you know, I think we all have to look at what the community does, what matters the most um, to our bosses on some level, like what, what matters to them and then find the number that makes sense to tie to that um, concern. You know, time to first reply. People might be concerned about how fast people get a reply. Um, but active members tends to be the big one. Um, as far as the tool, um, it depends on the platform. I would, I, honestly, I think platform builders should include this tools could include a basic metric suite in their tools, period. Um, Facebook Graph Insights, just to go back to Facebook, is a disaster. Um, it is a poor tool. It doesn't work. Um, you know, tell me the, try to find the, who are the active members last 28 days on February 16th of this year. Well, you can't because the number they put in the right side is the number for the last 28 days, no matter what date span you put in. 
you cannot get a concrete number. You can get a daily number, which is worthless, but you can get a concrete number over a period of time. So um, it doesn't work. And an active members on Facebook is someone who viewed, reacted, um, commented. Um, most people wouldn't count views and active members. Like I can understand why they, what they did, but like most people would s kind of separate that out for obvious reasons. So uh, I, I don't have any great tools. Community analytics, community-analytics.com is a tool to check out. Um, I like the stuff that they're doing and that boss Van Laven is doing over there. Um, you know, we use them with Facebook until Facebook cut them out um, and made us use Graph Insights. So yeah, I would check out community-analytics.com. Uh, I mean, what's your point um, uh, what's your point about monetization of community and which tools you use to grow and maintain community productive? Um, uh, I mean, I don't know the question. It's a little vague, but I will say just gener generically on monetization. I think that uh, it just depends on the community. Like there are a lot of great tools. I think advertising still can make sense. Premium member programs make sense. Um, you know, I think there are a lot of different things you can do. I like skim links. I think that's a smart tool. Um, and you know, I, I just think I wrote a, I wrote an ebook monetizing online forums, which is free to download monetizing online forums.com. And it includes, it, it's five years old, but it includes basically still the same basic map out of what tools and programs are available for monetization. Um, and so, yeah, I would, I would check that out because it's, it's kind of a big, big topic. Uh, what metrics, uh, teach you what metrics can be measured in an offline meetup and how can that add value to the online community? So I will say like, this is an area where I am not as well versed offline community versus online community. So I kind of defer to people who would, uh, be smarter on that. Um, I think that, uh, you know, when you think about how it works to add value to the online community, um, I think that there is sort of an invisible element to it, which is that when we meet in person, we make progress on relationships that is unique. Um, and, you know, as much as I love online communities, like if I spend an hour with someone in person, that's probably uh, the same as reading 500 other community posts, right? As far as the relationship building aspect of it. So I think you're just tying your members in a deeper way. Um, now, is that easier to measure? I don't know. I think that if you're really looking, um, you can always find things. For example, um, you can say, these 30 people were at the offline meetup. Here's what they did in the community over the next six months. Take 30 people who were not at the meetup, average them out. The people who are at the meetup, are they more engaged than the people who weren't? They're probably going to be. Um, and so like there's, there's this idea that you're serving a deeper, more engaged portion of your audience. Um, and so, yeah, I think that there are things, you just have to look for them and think about it and think about how it works and what you're looking for. Like, Maybe you can take conversations from the offline meetup and put them into the online community. Uh, maybe it's more content for the community, more content for your other efforts. Um, I think there's different things you could look at. Again, I'm probably not the best person to speak to it, but those are a couple ideas. Asia, in, in your experience, Patrick, what is the average time frame um, that power users remain power users? You know, no idea. I have no idea. Um, I think that it totally varies. I feel like that would be a number that would be so random uh, between different communities. Um, I mean, people have different stages of life. Like I, I, I see community different than some folks in the sense that I don't see my community as locking you into some engagement dungeon or a uh, commitment ladder or commitment curve. Um, you know, people graduate, they move on, they leave. I don't, um, I don't collect people. I don't, I don't try to collect people, um, in the creepy, uh, serial killer sense or in the, uh, virtual, uh, numbers in a chart sense. I don't, I don't collect people. I help people get to some point. And sometimes they stick around for a long time, sometimes they don't. Um, but um, yeah, I don't think there's any particular metric. I mean, I've had people who were moderators for me for 12 years. Like I had someone who just left me a while back. They were with me for 12 years. Um, most of my moderation team at CardiForms.com has been with me uh, for more than I think eight years, like eight, 10, eight, nine, 10 years, all of them. So I think that it varies and you'll see it varying in the charts. I don't think there's any really, um, I don't know. I don't know if there's any sort of average number that would be helpful there, but I appreciate the question. Just circling back to make sure I don't miss anything else. I think I have answered everything as best as I could. Hopefully they've been uh, helpful answers. Um, last call, anything else? Any other questions? Uh, anything about what I said? Anything else? Happy to, uh, happy to provide any information.
Just give it in a second. We can say goodbye here. Okay, Paris says, I guess that's all from everyone. So I guess that's all from everyone. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me. Um, I uh, appreciate all the thoughtful questions. If there's anything I didn't answer um, that you uh, want more information about, feel free to uh, reach out to me um, via email or uh, via email is best, patrick at ifrocky.com. Um, and uh, I'd be happy to provide any additional information. Um, if you'd like to uh, find more details on me, you can visit communitysignal.com. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Patrick O'Keefe. Um, yeah, thanks so much for spending some time with me this evening. And uh, I look forward to participating more in the uh, community folks group. And I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. So have a great evening. Thanks so much. Bye.